we express a wish that all beings be happy. So what are you doing here, sitting with our eyes closed, watching our breath? As the John Swat used to say, we each have one person, one person that we're responsible for. And that's where everything begins. It's not the case we look out only after this one person. But well, we learn how to look out after this one person in a way that's good not only for us, but also for the people around us. There's that passage in the canon where there's an acrobat with his assistant on his shoulders. And he's saying to the assistant, now you look out after me and I'll look out after you and we'll come down safely from our bamboo pole. And she says, no, that wouldn't do. I have to look out after myself and you look out after yourself and that way will both come down safely. And as the Buddha said, in that case, she was the one, the assistant was the one who was right. But he also goes on to say that sometimes the process works the other way around. It's by looking out after others that you develop good qualities inside. Good qualities inside. Developing goodwill is good for you. Developing patience, forbearance, is good for you. Equanimity, kindness, these things are obviously good for other people. But they're also important parts of training your own mind. So there's a back and forth. You work on your inner work, and it will have its impact out in the world. And the good things you do in the world will have an impact on your own mind. Right now we're focused on our breath. We're working on the inner work, but it's good to keep in mind some of the outer things we do. As the Buddha said, there's no way you're going to get into right concentration if you're stingy. There's no way you're going to get into the noble attainments if you're stingy. So generosity is a necessary part of the path. It develops a human quality, the quality of realizing that just as you love yourself, other people love themselves. And instead of taking that as an excuse to just say, well, I'll just love myself as much as I want, to help with everybody else, let them fend for themselves. Use it as a jumping off place for a sense of fellow feeling. We're all in this together. Everybody wants happiness. And for the most part, we're pretty deluded about how to do it. And that should help develop a sense of fellow feeling, kindness, goodwill, and also some patience, realizing you can't straighten everybody out. Because after all, you're not straightened out yourself yet. There's a lot of work that needs to be done inside. And so our desire to want everybody else to be perfect has to be tempered by our own reflection. Well, we're not there yet. After all, the world we're experiencing, everything that you experience through the senses, sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, all of these things come from your past karma. This world that we're living in, the world that you're living in, is the result of your past actions. And you can't see all of your past actions right now. You may have some really good things in the past and some really bad things in the past you don't know about. They're not showing themselves at the moment. But when you get frustrated at the world, you have to remind yourself, well, it's just a reflection of what I've been doing. Sometimes actions you did a long time ago, it may seem unfair that you have to still deal with the results of something that, you've, that you did back when you didn't know anything at all. But that's just the way it works. And so you develop patience and goodwill so that you can act in ways that will get some good energy into the world, so that something good will come back. There was a case when, years back, John Fuang had a student. She was a nurse. 
And she was very good looking, and she was often the, the target of a lot of people's gossip at the workplace. And then one day it just really got to her. She went and meditated with John Fuang during her lunch break. And she had this vision of herself in this big hall of mirrors, seeing herself reflected back, 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 who knows how many times. And it got her thinking about rebirth. She began to have a sense that she's probably been gossiped about for all those many times. It got even more oppressive. So after she left meditation, she told the John Fuang about just her sense of frustration and hopelessness around this, thinking that he would give her some words of encouragement and comfort. He said, well, you're the one who wanted to be born. <laughs> shocked her, but it made her come to her senses. After all, she was the one who chose this lifetime, just this world, as opposed to the better worlds that are out there. It may have been because she just didn't have the opportunity, or because she consciously made this choice not to go to a, a better world. But again, you have to realize you're not just the target of everybody else's misbehavior. You've been putting some misbehavior out there into the world yourself. This applies to all of us. The Buddha himself had done a lot of unskillful things in his previous lifetimes. You can read about them in the Jataka tales. They're tales where he kills, steals, has illicit sex, takes intoxicants, breaks four of the precepts. It's important that he never breaks the one against lying. That's not in his, it was not in his nature. But the times when he breaks all the others, he's still learning the ropes. So just as you want to have some people have compassion for you and the fact that you're learning the ropes, remember everybody else is learning the ropes. The images of a young sailor on a ship who still doesn't know which sails to put up, which sails to put down, which rope to pull on, which rope not to pull on. It takes a while, especially in the old days when the sailing ships were quite complex. The world is a very complex place. They're all still learning the ropes. So we should have some compassion for one another, goodwill for one another, just as we would like to have some compassion from others. In other words, what you want from other people is what you should give. And this is not meant to place blame on you, but it's meant to give you a sense of power. By changing your mind, by changing your actions, you can change the world. Not by going on around and straightening everybody else out, but as you straighten out your own mind, you start doing better things, creating a better world. Through your generosity, through your virtue, through your goodwill. And goodwill has to be paired with patience. We want beings to be happy, but it's not going to happen overnight. We want beings to do the things that would lead to true happiness. That's certainly not going to happen overnight. In the meantime, they're going to be doing unskillful things to us, and we have to have patience so that we're not sending a bad reaction back. Just think, if somebody does something, sends it your way, just let it drop at your feet. Think of it not reaching you. You don't have to pick it up. So you don't have to continue the back and forth. We meditate to find the strength within in order to do the things that we know should be done. Because it's often not easy. There are a lot of things we like to do that give bad results, a lot of things we don't like to do that give good results, and we need strength, a sense of well-being coming from a place of nourishment a place where we don't feel threatened. So we can talk the mind into doing the things that give good results in the long term and to avoid the things that give bad results. Long term is something of a luxury for most people. When you think about people who are really starving, they often can't think about long term. All they can think about is the next meal. It's when you're well fed that you can start thinking further out. Well, it's the same with the mind. As long as the mind is starving and it's feeling irritated, 
and unhappy. All I can think about is immediate results, the desire for immediate hit. So we feed the mind with concentration, we feed the mind with comfortable breath sensations, work through the body so we can feel bathed in a sense of ease and realize that nobody can take this sense of ease away from us. We're not threatened. That lets us take in the long term, not only the long term into the future, but also thinking back into the past. and being a little bit more mature about our attitude about the bad things that come our way in the world, or the bad situation in the world. Realizing that we, we've played a role in making things bad, just we've played the role in making things good, but it's a mix. That's what the human realm is, it's a mix. So here's our opportunity to put some more good into the mix. And even though we're not planning to hang around in the world forever, we want to leave something good behind. Think about the Buddha. He's gone to a dimension that's totally outside of space and time. He doesn't have to be involved in worlds at all, but look what he left behind. A Dharma and a Vinaya that have lasted now for 2,600 years and have provided a lot of help to a lot of people. Maybe we can't leave behind something quite so majestic, but we can leave behind whatever goodness we can muster. So that we leave the world, we leave on good terms. Not out of aversion but a sense of dispassion, which comes when you realize, okay, we've done enough. And that particular job is done. The world itself will never be perfect, but we paid off our debts. That's another good thought to keep in mind. We're all born into the world with debts. It's only when we gain awakening that we're totally debt-free. As John Lee would often point out, it's by developing these four jhanas, developing the four elements in the body. He says that's our field. We can make it grow all kinds of crops, and then we can sell the crops, and that's how we pay off our debts. We do it by developing inner wealth that we then spread around.